What's up guys, Daniel de Groot here, full-time Jiu-Jitsu competitor and a European and Brazilian champion. As most of the world is on lockdown right now, especially the Jiu-Jitsu world, uh, I thought there's no better time uh, for me to teach you guys how I like to study matches. Studying matches is something I use a lot, uh, it helped me improve my Jiu-Jitsu a lot. Most of my guard game I learned through studying matches and uh, I always give this advice to my students as well. I actually got advice from a friend of mine, uh, Clifford, he's a Ruben black belt. And he said, uh, if you want to get good at jiu-jitsu, you have to find somebody with a similar body type at a high level of jiu-jitsu and you have to study his matches. I always tell my students the same thing. Find somebody, similar body type, a uh, game of jiu-jitsu that you like and study their jiu-jitsu game. But how do you actually go about studying jiu-jitsu matches? Uh, it might seem like you just watch it, but there's actually some methods to it uh, that I use with, uh, with success. I can uh, learn a lot from studying matches and I apply the moves on a high level. So I'm going to teach you guys the steps that I use to, to learn from studying jiu-jitsu matches. We're going to use Tarek Hopstock as an example. He's a high-level competitor from Norway, won a lot of big competitions. He beat some really big names. He's most known from, from his uh, Tariq Plata, but he also has a super interesting guard game and very dangerous footlocks. So we're going to use some of his matches to uh, make the points of how to study jiu-jitsu matches. So the first thing you have to do is get a material. Um, depending on your competitor, there can be matches on flow grappling, YouTube, uh, UFC fight pass, depends a bit on the rule set that the competitor likes. For Tarek we're lucky because uh, Sweep King is a, a channel on YouTube and he films a lot of European competitors competing on European soil and uh, there's a lot of footage of Tarek competing on that channel. So uh, thanks to Sweep King for making these, these videos and we're going to use those to study uh, the matches. So usually when I'm uh, studying matches I like to use a lot of material, so here you can see my library on Tarek's matches. But for this video, let's just take a look at two matches so we can keep it nice and short uh, and we don't have to go too deep into his game. Uh, and I can just teach you the concepts of learning through Jiu Jitsu matches. Okay, step two is making notes. Um, you're just going to write down what's happening. So, uh, what grip is the competitor using? Which moves does he do? Uh, for every match, you watch, you want to write down the positions and the moves that are being used. doesn't matter if you don't know the name of the position, you just make some up. So let's take a look. So here you can see Tarek is using his shin on the opponent's shin, the other one is on the, uh, in the middle of the butt. So this uh, would be a shin to shin guard. Now he tries to lie down, opponent tries to move back, posting on his chest. Now Tarek goes to a knee shield half guard. Uh, he's actually not using the, the knee shield, he's using this foot here uh, to block his opponent and this bottom foot is blocking the leg. Opponent tries to reach for his head, you can see the, the hand moving. If we go back a little bit, Tarek catches the hand with two arms, he pulls it towards him, steps over, gets his foot free, pushes the leg away, locks the leg. He keeps controlling, he's locking his legs. So here you don't need to think about why, you just write down exactly what you see. His hand is on his thigh, the other hand is holding the opponent's pants. He rolls the opponent through. He rolls the opponent through again, he holds his hip. He sits in a split squat position and he gets a tap. Okay, so this is just writing down exactly what you see. You don't need to think about it too much, you just write down what you see. Step three is about connecting the dots. Now you're gonna actually have to think. So you're gonna match, uh, watch the matches again and you're gonna try to find the cue behind each move. So when I'm teaching, I'm talking a lot about cues. Cues are the things that make you fire off a move. Uh, whenever I teach, I try to find the cue for every move that I do. So let's use Tarek for an example. His cue for playing reverse de la Hiva is a standing opponent. So as you can see, uh, Taiman is standing here, Tarek is using the reverse de la Hiva. His cue for playing the knee shield is when opponent goes to his knees. So if you go further a little bit, time gets on his knees here, now Tarek will start playing a knee shield guard. Look how his knee is blocking the opponent, the other foot is aiming towards going to a half guard, and now another cue comes into play. Time posts his hands on the ground, and Tarek goes for the Terrico Plata. He dives under the arm, and he's gonna catch the Terrico Plata. If you go back to the match with Bruno Lima, we can see the same cues uh, happening. So, you're here, Bruno gets up, 
he starts in a split stance. So this is also a uh, reverse De La Riva, Shin on Shin situation. As soon as Bruno moves his knee to the ground, he starts moving back. Tark will switch to the half guard with the knee shield. Here. Again, Bruno tries to either grab his collar or post his hand on the mat. That's Tarek's cue to go for the Terrico Plata. He, uh, he attacks immediately. And for every move that you see, you want to find the cue. So you go back to your notes. You see every time um, Tarek does a Terrico Plata and you're going to see what cue he uses to shoot for the Terrico Plata. Okay, step four in the process is countering the counter. So now you know the moves and the cues, it's time for some troubleshooting. This works best if you already have some practical experience with the position. When you're trying out a new position, inevitably you'll run into problems. Now it's time to get back to the tape and watch how Tarek is dealing with them. So let's say I'm having trouble with people hopping over and escaping my Terrico Plata. I find uh, all the matches where uh, Tarek uses the Terrico Plata until I find one where the opponent tries to hop over the move. Uh, in this video Bruno Lima tries to hop over Let's see how Tarek deals with that. So he gets the move. Look how Bruno is trying to jump over to the other side. He tries to move, tries to move, but look how Tarek is blocking his leg using his arm. So this way you'll have to be a little bit smarter with, with looking and you have to think a little bit more to find the reasons behind it. But um, most solutions are always found in the matches. So you just go back to your notes, you already noted exactly in which matches uh, your competitor used the move. Then you just go back to those matches and you see which counters his opponent is giving him and how he deals with the counters. Step 5 is about concepts. During the entire process I'm keeping a list with the most important concepts. So it's not actually step 5, I use this throughout the process. Uh, here are some of the concepts that I wrote down for Tarek's knee shield guard. First you need to manage the distance with your outside leg, either the foot or the knee. Uh, that way you remove the power of the cross face. The second concept is that whenever somebody uses a hand post on the ground or tries to cross face you or hold your, uh, your collar, you're going to set up the Terrico Plata. Whenever you go to the Terrico Plata, you use their power. So when they move back, you go with them. When they roll forward, roll with them. Whenever somebody gets up from the knee shield, you just go back to uh, Shin on Shin reverse De La Hiva. Okay, so now it's time for step six. Rinse and repeat. You just try everything you learned uh, in training and then you come back to the video so when you're trying the moves of course you're gonna run into trouble you can't learn a move perfectly for the first time so you try them out you try to remember where things went well where things went bad and then you go back to the matches and try to study uh, the details that made it work for Tarek but didn't make it work for me the best thing you can actually do if you have the opportunity if you're still stuck in some positions, is get a private class or a seminar with the competitor. So uh, I was lucky enough to get the opportunity to train with uh, Tarek in a private class once, and it was probably the best investment uh, in my jiu-jitsu that I've ever made. Uh, some things are really hard to see at competition speed, and just asking the competitor straight away how and why he does certain things can save a lot of time. Of course, you need to have a basic understanding of their game, but it helps a lot if you can actually talk to them face-to-face -face in a private class or in a seminar uh, to deal with the trouble. Uh, you can't figure out by just studying your matches. Alright, that's it for this week's video. Hope you guys learned something from that and you can start improving your jiu-jitsu even without uh, being on the mats. If you liked the video, make sure to share it with your teammates. Uh, make sure to leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And hope to see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.